Yes, uh, from the University of Sao Paulo. And he's going to talk about classical quantum or categorical, or if you prefer, representations, quantizations, and category techniques. Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you to all of you for coming to this talk. And thank you, Zlava, for the invitation. So uh, the title of this talk is Classical Quantum and Categorical, but the idea is to show you just interaction and examples between classical objects, which are going to be representations, quantizations of these representations in some sense, and categorifications again of these representations, and in some sense we can recover or we can get relation between these three. Uh, the, the talk is based in two basic examples, which are just the symmetric group and SL2. It is possible to do it in more general GD algebras, of course, but I don't want to do that. And, and also I will show you two applications. The first one is related with uh, some quantum groups at root of unities. And the second application is more in this side of categorification of which relates the Lie algebra syntax A and symmetric groups. So the first two or three slides are really basic. I just want to recall you what, what is the objects that I want to work, the algebra SL2. It's enveloping algebra, which is the classical object that I'm interested in. And I want to recall you, this is the shape of the finite dimensional representation. I'm not going to an infinite dimensional case, just finite dimensional is really the, the, what I need. I will denote it LN, maybe it's not needed in the future, but just when I show you the categorification of this stuff, I will call it similar way. For quantum group, I'm going to consider two versions. This is the generic version of a quantum group. For SL2, it's just this associative algebra in a variable B with these generating objects, uh, sorry, with these generators and these relations. And for this quantum group, the representation theory is kind of the same of the usual Lie algebra. So if you understand this representation theory, it's the same for this one. When B is generic, or a complex number which is not a root of unity or plus minus one. The other quantum group, I like it, and for this one is the first application, is the logistic version of the quantum group, which is constructed with the integrated form of divided powers. And for this one, I will consider a root of unity. This L could be odd, could be, could be even. Uh, the application I'm going to show you, I'll just show you in the SL2 case, but it's true for semi-simple algebras. In this case, the representation theory is more interesting because the category of representations is not semi-simple, so you need to go to better techniques or improve for understand how, how, how goes the, the simple modules, the decomposable modules, and all of this. Representations for root of unity case, just for example, when we have a third root of unity, they have this shape. This first tree looks similar to the finite dimensional representation for quantum, for Lie algebra, but I will to point out that in this case, this one is called the Stein representation. It's irreducible, but it's also projective. These two are irreducible. But when I jump, you notice this is three minus one, and when I go to the third, third to the fourth representation, these are called the Vi modules, then we get a maximal subquotient and the irreducible simple module, and in this case, something similar. So we can see in this picture that you have three which are irreducibles and two that are just indecomposable. For that reason, this representation theory is more important. But at the end, people interested in the fusion uh, categories associated with this quantum group, just we need to consider just this first two because this one is going to be projective and there are some troubles with it. The first application I want to show you is related with this quantum group of root of unity and as the name says fusion, I'm going to show you another way to construct the fusion category related to the quantum group without the use of tilting modules. I just want to recall you, for quantum group of root of unity, as in the previous example, we noticed the first up to L minus two elements, these, these representations are irreducible, and you can play around with this. You can sum out, you can tensor, and everything, this category is closed. This is what is closed the fusion category, which is a semi-simple category, of course, much more properties, and its Grotten Dick ring is going to be called the fusion ring. In, for example, in the case of a fifth root of unity, we have these four irreducible representations, and these are the fusion rules in this case. In this case of SL2, it's easy to compute all of this. 
In higher cases, we need to use the kazan lucic polynomials, for example. But the problem of this construction, if you go to do it in a formal way, you need to use something called tilting modules. Tilting modules are modules which has a filtration, and it's dual also has a filtration given by these delta i modules. This is maybe it's not the more natural notion, but it's what we have. Uh, examples, of course, there are irreducible modules. We have in the composable modules for each, for each weight of your Lie algebra. You have that every tilting module can be written as a direct sum of in the composable tilting modules. And this is a tensor category. But because every tilting module can be written as a sum of in the composable tilting modules, you will notice that the red part is the semi-simple part of this module, and the blue part is a non-semi-simple part because it's just composed for decomposable tilting modules. These tilting modules are the called negligible tilting modules. And in this case, that means that the quantum dimension of these modules is zero. But for SL2, it's not, I, I don't need to go to this. And it's just to say this part when j is bigger than l minus 2, including l, l, sorry, l minus 1, then we have a part that I want to neglect and just remains with this. The usual construction of fusion categories just consider this tilting and taking out all the negligible modules. All this in the composable modules were not reduced. This is the classical construction. Problem, can we do the same without the tilting modules to try to generalize to the other categories? And there is a partial answer. I need to consider the right category of finite dimensional representations for quantum group as root of unity. You may wonder why you need to jump to the right, the right category. And this is based on a result of Bellinson, Berzokapnikov, Mirkovich, which claims that this is the right category, well, in geometric terms, but you can prove this in algebra way, of this quantum group. It's equivalent as a triangulated category to the bounded homotopy category of tilting modules. So I can start to erase this one and try to work in here. If I start to work in here, also I can consider homotopy category of negligible tilting modules, and then I can translate who is this category in this side. And this is what I call N, this N here. This is just the image and, and the, the functor, sorry, and then the functor which gives me this equivalence. In this case, this kind of quotient has, this, has this still the information of tilting modules in this idea. But just for the specific case of the quantum groups of root of unity, you can prove that this idea is generated by modules over the finite dimensional modules over the quantum group of, uh, at the root of unity belonging to the singular blocks. This is a tensor triangulated ideal of the derived category. This result says that this ideal depends purely of representation theoretical information of this category. Sad news, this is not possible to generalize maybe to other more general categories. But at least in the case of quantum groups, you can erase the word tilting and again define the fusion ring because the Grothendieck ring of this Berthier equation, you recover the fusion category. Then you may ask, can you go further? And kind of. If you consider a category which the notion of negligible object or morphism is defined, for example, it's spherical category, category representation of a spherical Hopf algebra, something like that, you can try to consider this quotient. In this case, this is the triangulated tensor ideal of this bounded the right category, but generated by all the negligible objects in this category. I don't know. Yeah, this one. C is a tensor category, yes, yes. Could, could be, for example, a spherical category for the definition of the quantum dimension. In this case, I don't know if this ideal is all this the right category or, or is empty. I have criterions to check when it is a proper ideal and to which, which, which claim that this is non-empty category. Problem, hard to compute this because there are no too many examples, real examples with all the description of the indecomposable modules of the category. So mm, in some cases, this is hard to compute. But in the case this is possible to do it, 
you can define something that I have used and I just call it the right fusion ring. Maybe it's not recovering the same fusion ring, but something similar to it based on the right categories. Can I apply this? Yes. There is, uh, I, it's possible to compute this kind of the right categories for the small quantum group as FL, SL2, but because in this specific case, we know a lot of information about it. It's in the compose of all, and all of this. In this case, we can recover the so-called Berlin de algebra, which is related to the fusion ring for the SL2, for the quantum group, for the small quantum group of SL2. So, works in some cases, but need to go working in, I, I need to find more examples in which, in which I have all the information of the category. This is the, the, the main complication for this kind of computation. So this is the first application, and it's based in quantum groups at root of unity. Now what I want to show you is not root of unity case, but the generic case, relate quantum groups in the generic case with symmetric groups, jump to the quantized version, and jump to the categorical version, and relate it. And the relation was, well, at the end, I will show you a work in progress that also Lucas show and his life with the sure by duality, which is the theorem that is going to relate the, all this stuff. Okay, this is the more basic slide which follows. I know all of you know at least this one. I, I know also this one. This is the version of the symmetric group I'm going to consider. Why this one? Because this is the Hecke algebra, I like it. And if you notice, if you put B equals to one, you will recover the associative algebra of CSN. This is the associative algebra, so I will recover this. But it's the same. This is what I call the quantization. In some sense, it's a quantization of the symmetric group. This Hecke algebra is really important in representation theory because uh, with this Hecke algebra, we can compute the irreducibles in Berma modules and all of this, all this Kazdan Lucic theory. But also, this Hecke algebra, we know that has another basis. I'm not going to define this. This is the Kazdan Lustig basis for this. It's not exactly this, it's different. And this is the one that I'm going to like it more in the future. In this case, what is the version of categorical? This is classical, what I call classical in my talk. This is what I call, called the quantum version. But then, what is the categorical version? And the categorical version is the so-called circle by modules. In this category of circle by modules, more or less, you need to consider this circle by modules just to, to recall you. They were constructed by circle again to the proof the kazan the kazan conjecture was by pure in algebraic terms, which at the end was not possible up, up to a couple of years ago with Williamson and Elias in, when they, they go to this hot theory of circle by modules. But I'm going to consider this polynomial ring I'm going to consider elements in the symmetric group for each i up to one, up to n minus one, and I will go to define this by module. This by module, if you notice, is this polynomial ring, a shift of the polynomial ring, this is a graded object, and the invariance given by this reflection. Then, I will consider tensor products of these guys, and this is called a bot samuelson by module. With these bot samuelson by modules, these are in the composable object, that if you can extract the, if you can write it, sorry, if you can write it as a direct sum of objects for this guy, then you will get what are the circle by modules. Circle by modules are the direct summands or finite sum of graded shifts of both samples one by modules. And this category is going to be denoted by SVI modules. This is hard problem. This is hard to, to find these modules uh, in an explicit way, but you also can define this category like a, by generators and relations. The generators at top saying are going to be all of these, and then you need to consider the category which has all these generators, and it's close under direct sums, tensor products, shifts. Graded category of all of these. Why is this related with the previous slide, with the Hecke algebras and symmetric group? Because the categorification theorem of Sergel and Elias Williamson, which claims the following. This Hecke algebra is isomorphic to the split Grothendieck group. This is not a abelian category. This is an additive category. For that reason, I need to take a split Grothendieck group just to take out in each short decac sequence the direct sum of both. So this theorem claims that this split Grothendieck group of this category of Sergel by modules coincides with the Hecke algebra 
And when I put b equals to 1, I recover again the symmetric group. What is the relation? Just the relation, the, the, as, as a morph, as a function, you, you send the basic object of the kazdan lustig basis to this basic object of the category of circle my modules. OK. Now, just have in mind these three guys. Symmetric group, Hecke algebra, circle by modules. Jump to the quantum type, to quantum groups. For if you want to categorify something, I, I, as, as far as I understand it, it's like a, like a general recipe. And this one that I'm going to show is given by Raphael Rouquier. Uh, Raphael Rouquier and also Kovanov and Lauda, they define something called the tukak moody algebra on the KLR algebras. And is this. The tukal moody algebra, at least for SL2, ASL2, is the two category, the additive two category generated in the following way. You may wonder, ah, yeah, this is, at least for me, this is complicated definition, but this definition, at least these three items, are based in the idempotent version of a graded quantum group. This was uh, did by Lustig, and if, 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 you, if you try to understand this graded version of quantum groups, then you land in something like that, because at the end, this quantum group is going to be a two category with the objects are going to be the weights. I'm just going to, well, I know, Rouquet was going to emulate these ideas. And in the understanding of these two functors, because at the end, they are going to be adjoint functors, he lands to the, if you, you just need, need to consider one of these with some relations. And the relations are going to be by this, which are the Hecker relations, the Neil Hecker relations, to be precise. But for these relations, we encode the Hecke algebra. These relations, you can write, of course, everything in this way, but it's better to use diagrammatical calculus for categories. It's, it's more easier in this, in this case. And this last relation is just the commuting relation, the usual commuting relation EF, the bracket of EF and F is going to be H. This is just what means this relation here. This guy is the one that categorifies quantum groups and also the enveloping algebra, the usual enveloping algebra. Then there is the theorem of Rouquet and kovanov lauda When you put degrees on the morphisms x, tau, epsilon, and eta, these morphisms here, the generating two morphisms of these two categories, you will recover the quantum group at generic parameter. If you don't think on these grades, you will recover the usual universal enveloping algebra. So this is a good version. This is Grothendieck group for these two categories. So we have a relation again. Now we can jump from the Lie algebra, its quantum group, and a two categorical version. But what is a representation in this case? Representation, it's a K linear cut. In K linear categories, it's a family of categories indexed by natural number n, a family of functors from Bn to n minus 2, emulating the action of f and the one of e. And these two guys are going to be adjoint. And they, we need also some morphisms, x and tau, with the same properties of the Hecke algebra. And again, this, 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 this line up here. Why? Because I want a representation. I, I, I was kind of translating the usual way to write that representation. Examples of these representations, this is L0, the trivial representation is just category of K modules. K could be a algebraic closed field. The representation of weight one, something like this. These are identities functor. And if you will go up, you need to consider restriction and induction functors. And with this, you can construct all the representation. These are called, at least in the notation of Ricard, the minimal representations that categorifies the usual representations for Lie algebra. This Ln categorifies all the reducibles for SL2, classical SL2. Okay? The classical SL2, we are in generic case, so also for the quantum, quantum group. So what is the relation of all of this? There is an application in sure by duality. This is work in progress, so I, sadly I can show you nice results. But the version that I'm interested in is the double centralizing form of the sure duality. This is the classical one, when this is a standard representation. This is GLN, and this is the, the group algebra of symmetric group. There is, of course, the quantum version. When you consider the quantum version of the standard representation, you consider it sensor prog, and you get something like this, then now you can notice CN goes to Hecke algebra, 
GLN, I put SLN. You can do this again with SLN. So I put the generic version of the quantum group in SLN. So you may wonder, OK, let's go to the quantum case. This is in progress, but with all of, uh, uh, all of this stuff that I'm showing to you, you can jump from symmetric group to circle by modules, enveloping algebras to tukak moody algebras, and then you want something like this. Problems in this. What's the meaning of these endomorphisms of this object invariant under the action of the tukak moody algebra? This is going to be a two category. There are ways to write these two category. One possibility is that if we have these categories LN, these two categories, which categorifies the representation, and for example, let's say if this one is the standard or whatever in, the, in, in SL2, let's call it N, just N. You can categorify also. If you have two representations, for example, something like this for SL2, you can categorify this tensor product. This is done by Ben, ben Webster. And there is a way that if you consider a standard representation, and then you want to consider tensor products of a standard representation, you can categorify this. There, is, there are papers by Ben Webster, which an algorithm and a way to do that. But in this case, I'm not considered this object in this scenario. I'm going to see another category. This is a joint work with Nicolas Lividinsky, uh, which was suggested by Lividinsky and also by, by Rafael Rouquier. And it's a category of bimodules. I'm more interested. Well, it's kind of similar. It's kind of the same, because in, in these tensor products, in the, classical, in the classical case, you will get like the composition of the weights by, by partitions. So I want to consider something like this. I consider the polynomial ring, but I need to consider invariants. And there's some symmetric group, symmetric group, and some categories of bimodules of these two rings. When mu is going to be a partition of some weight lambda related with the with, of the weight lambda related with the, the standard representation. So this is the GAT category. I'm going to put in here. I know this is a two category. This is a two representation for the all these in, in this in this in this setup. And there is also a notion of endomorphism of these two categories, again, given by Rafael Rouquet. And in this part is where I just to stop, because in this case, for SL2, we can say that it's going to work, but I don't have the general result, which is this one. And this is the one that I want, we want, and we are working in. So this is a beautiful version to go in three steps of a nice formula in two categories, which categorifies the usual uh, sure by duality. And that's all that I want to show you. Thank you very much for coming. Comments or questions? This statement dot? The, the last statement. Or, ah, sorry, ah, the small quantum group. Yes, the problem in this case, <coughs> there is a work of Anna Lachowska in which she, she constructs some kind of fusion ring for this, and she called it the Berlin de algebra. This Berlin de algebra, let's call it PR. She constructed also using the projective modules for the small quantum group. So in this case of the small quantum group of SL2, in this case, this proof, I want to do this. I consider the category, the right category, only the right category of this small quantum group. And I also consider the ideal, triangulated ideal and tensor generated by all the negligible modules. I want to understand this. There, there is a criterion that I have to check if this ideal is not proper. And it depends if I take like a morphism in, in this. 
I need to check a property on the co-kernel of this morphism. If the co-kernel of this morphism doesn't satisfy a, a property, then I know this, this category for arbitrary morphism, this category is going to be proper in here. So I can prove that, prove that, but the problem is the understanding of these morphisms for all the indecomposables in these categories. So I need exact, explicit construction of all the indecomposables, which was done in the literature, and I can start to case-by-case -case analysis, checking some property of co-kernels of, of maps between indecomposables in the small quantum group, and in this case, I, I, I can, it's possible to put a morphism between this VR and the growth and the ring on all of this, and with a dimension counting on both sides, we can prove that these two rings are the same, more or, le more or less in these lines. Sorry. That's my, my motivation for this was to erase these this tilting modules because in some, some cases, some categories, some spherical categories, there is no way to define tilting modules using this filtration. So that, that was my motivation. How can I do the same with tilting modules? And for that reason, I use this uh, bailing from the Zerkapnikov Mikore equivalence, which erase tilting modules and go to all the category. But the problem is because I don't have tilting modules in all the categories, maybe I need to go to all the negligibles. This semi, semi, semi simplification is possible to do in the valiant setting. You get infinitely many, maybe reducible objects. But in this scenario, looks like this, it's with finitely many simple, simple objects in this category, but at least in, the, in these small examples. Problem, at least for me, it's too complicated to go to this because the absence of enough examples of these kind of categories. Any further comments or questions? So let's thank Juan again. And before we go, so let's thank Slava for putting it. And let's thank, thank the staff of ICTP as well, uh, Thiago and Humberto and Jandira. And then the name of... Uh,